right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so happy that you are here to dive into the Masters of Basics using SPSS. My name is Emily Springer. I'm an academic trainer in the Center for Teaching and Learning. I'm joined by my colleague, Esther Arkanj, also an academic trainer in the Center for Teaching and Learning, and one of our very own coaches, Rachel Broom. Uh, please feel free to post in the chat. Just one tiny brief reminder about that. If you want everyone to see your comment, please select the everyone option in the drop dropdown. Uh, this webinar also has the capability to show subtitles. So if you'd like to see the scrolling transcript, feel free to um, select the show subtitle option in your CC um, option of the bottom of the Zoom. And questions throughout are welcome feel free to pop those in the Q&A. So I love seeing in the chat, everybody um, actually joining from all over and uh, we're very happy to see you here. So without further ado, we will pass this right on over to Rachel. Great, thanks so much. I am very excited to help introduce some of you to SPSS. Um, hopefully uh, you guys are joining because maybe you've never used SPSS or maybe you're using it and you're wanting to feel a little bit more confident with it. So the goal of this webinar is to really just help you get familiar with using SPSS. I plan on just covering the basics. So some of the essential things that you need to be able to navigate and do the essential functions in SPSS. Um, so I have some objectives here. And these are what I hope that you will be able to accomplish by the end of this webinar. Now, I don't have built-in practice time, but I would encourage you to try to do the steps that I'm teaching in this webinar after. It's great that this is recorded because that means that you can come back later and you can follow along. So as I'm doing the steps, you can pause it and then you can do it yourself in your SPSS to make sure that you're able to do each of these steps. Um, but hopefully by the end of our webinar, you will, will be able to accomplish these basic and essential tasks using SPSS. And then I will bring this back up at the end of the webinar. This is a great time if you're watching the recording to pause so that you can write down these resources um, and get those links, those URLs to be able to navigate to the linked resources here. Um, but I wanna make sure that you guys know where you can get other resources to help you get more familiar, more practice with SPSS. So again, I'm gonna share this slide again at the end of the webinar when we're doing questions and things like that. So you have plenty of time to see it. All of that introductory stuff said, I'm going to jump right in to using SPSS. So the first thing I wanna start with, like I said, literally the basics, um, just opening SPSS. There's two ways you can do this. So you can see I have this saved on my desktop over here on the left. So we can launch the program the same way that we would launch, you know, Chrome or anything like that. Um, so if I double click on this, it's going to launch my program here. I'm using version 27. If you have version 26, it might open a little bit differently. Um, another way that you can launch the program is to simply open a data file. So if I go into my files here, um, let's see. And while you're going into your file, Rachel, we actually had a few people ask, how do they download the SPSS software? And I just wanted to let students know it's in the Student Technology Resource Center. It's in the University Service Module. Is there another way to access it, Rachel, that you want to share? Okay. I'll no, I usually that. send students to the University Services Module um, and the, the link for your SPSS access instructions from the CTL. I share that as well to help students find it. Awesome, I'll pop that info in the chat, thank you. So you can tell the program to open or if you have a data file. So um, like if your course provides the data file, if you open an SPSS data file, it will automatically launch the program to open that. So if I wanted to open one of these files, I would be able to do that there. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, when I launched my program, um, it opens up this welcome window. If you have run SPSS before, there is a little box down here that you can check that says not to show this window. 
Um, if you've checked that box before, this window might not open. Um, if you've never opened it before, or if you haven't checked that box, this window should open. One of the reasons that I like keeping this window as an option when it opens is it's going to show me all of my recent data files. This makes it really easy if I'm working on an assignment and I want to save and come back later. Um, I don't have to go back through and like re-download that file or anything like that. I can just click on it from my recent files here. So I like having this recent file option. You can also click on open another file and this will allow you to browse your computer to locate the file that you want to open. In our tutorial here, I'm going to start with a blank data set. So up here at the top where it says new files, I'm going to choose the new data set option. I can double click to launch it or I can click on the blue open button down here. And this is going to open a blank data set so you can see that there is nothing in the data set right now. Does anybody have questions to this point? Yes. We are wondering, <laughs> um, we are wondering if there's any possible way to make the numbers a little bit bigger on the screen in terms of like zooming in a little bit more, if that's possible. My yeah. suggestion too, while she's thinking about that is um, please make sure your Zoom screen is maximized so it's not a smaller screen. I was going to say, in my SPSS screen is as big as it gets. I am sure there's probably an accessibility setting on my computer that I could change that might zoom it, but I don't know how to do that. Okay. If anyone knows, um, pop it in the chat and we'll attempt it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to like make my screen zoom to a certain spot. I know there's ways that we can make it bigger, um, but I do have the window as big as it will go in my screen here. I mean, I guess, well, let me see, hang on. Move this thing somewhere else. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think, I don't feel like that helped. <laughs> I was gonna see about maybe like making it bigger and then just moving it. I don't know, I'm sorry. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can see okay. Um, someone's suggesting the view maybe by chance under That's view. That's the um, view in here. I don't think it's gonna change any of that. Oh, and someone actually mentioned when it was larger, that actually did help. Oh, okay. Um, let's, let's try. There we go. How's that? Oh, hey. Yay. So in <laughs> case you. anybody cares, it was in view and I went to where it says fonts. And then I just changed this font size over here. I made it 18 instead of 12. Okay. Perfect, learn something new, thanks guys. All right, so when we're here, and I need to, I don't think this little window pops, this little window guy always gets in my way here. All right, um, so when we're looking at SPSS, if you've used Excel, you might look and think, oh, this looks kind of like Excel, and it does. And there are some features of it that are going to work the same as entering information into Excel. And there's gonna be some information that's a little bit different. Um, so the first thing that I want to orient you to is to the fact that SPSS has two different views. So the view that we're in right now, we can see in this bottom left corner, it says data view. So in this view, I am looking at the data that I've collected. Obviously, it's empty. I don't have any yet. Um, but if I was going to be reading this, we can see across the top where it says VAR, that stands for variable. So each column in this view is representing a variable. And each row is representing the data being collected from one person. So I would read across the row to see how a person responded to a survey, for example. So maybe each variable is a question on that survey. And I could read across to see how that person responded to the survey. The other view is variable view. And this is where we define our variables. And I can make this bigger so we can see everything a little better here. Um, open these up a little bit so we can see the labels. Um, so this is where we're gonna define the variable. And what I mean by define means anything unrelated to the data. 
Um, so the first column here is the variable's name. This is the name that's going to show up on the spreadsheet. So you want it to be something short and simple. Um, if your variable is something like age, you can just put age there. Um, if you're working on a survey, then maybe the variable name is like the question number. So question one, so you could do like Q1 or something like that. In this column, it will not allow you to put spaces. You can use an underscore for a space, but again, for simplicity in the data view, you want this name to be short and sweet. Um, you can abbreviate things if you need to. You are able to go into the label and give it a more meaningful name. So if you had um, like assessment scores, you could do score for the name and then under label do assessment scores. So you can include spaces in the label. Another really great way to use this is like if you have questions, you can do name like question one or Q1, and then for the label, actually enter what that question is. So then when you generate all of your output, whether it's frequencies, graphs, things like that, it's gonna show the label. So you'll actually be able to see that question and then the data related to that question. Um, the second column where it says type, this is where you tell SPSS. Usually if you're entering numbers for your data or letters or words. Um, and I'm gonna go through these with examples as we go. Width, um, you're really not gonna change much. The only time you might adjust this is if you're using words and you need to have room for a specific number of letters in those words. Decimals allows us to um, add or remove decimal points from our values. Again, we talked about label. Um, the values is if we have categorical variables. So like gender, for example, and I'm going to assign numbers to represent the different genders for simplicity. So maybe I do one for male, two for female, three for non-binary, or I could list other categories or whatever you want that to look like. Um, so we could have those values there and we would define those in this column. And again, I'll show an example. You probably won't ever do anything with the missing columns is like width. You probably won't ever adjust anything in it. Alignment, you're probably never gonna adjust either. What we really care about here is measure. And this is talking about the levels of measurement of our variables. So things like nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. An important thing to know with SPSS is that interval and ratio are lumped together. So I'm sure you're probably sitting here thinking like, how am I ever gonna remember all this? Let's put it to practice now. So let's come up with a variable here. Um, we'll go with something simple first. So we'll just say our variable is age. Now, as soon as I click off of this, you can see it automatically pops some stuff up in here. So the type, and I'm gonna pull this over so we can see, um, it says numeric. That means SPSS is going to allow me to enter numbers. Since I'm using age, that's perfect. I'm gonna leave that. Width means up to eight numbers will be allowed. That is more than enough. So I don't have to adjust it. Again, most of the time you don't need to. Uh, the default is usually sufficient. For decimals, if I'm entering age, I'm gonna enter age in years. So I don't need the decimal points. I'm not entering anybody's ages as like decimal values. So I'm going to adjust this so it has zero decimals. This is gonna make it easier for me to read the data and the output. For my label, um, I can just put age. I don't have to repeat my name here if I don't want to. If the name is sufficient, I can leave this blank as well. I won't have any values on this one because it's not categorical. I'm not assigning numbers for different words, so I don't have values here. And then again, I'm gonna skip missing columns and alignment because I usually don't adjust those. The other one that I wanna look at is measure. This is my level of measurement. So, so this is age, nominal and ordinal are categorical. Age is not a category, at least the way that I'm going to define it. So I'm gonna click here to be able to change it. You can see that there is a scale option. This is for continuous data. If you're not familiar with levels of measurement, if you don't know how to determine the level of measurement of your variables, we have resources in the Academic Success Center 
We also offer a group session called Charts and Variables, and that's Thursdays at 11 a.m., usually right now, um, that you can join and you can learn about these levels of measurement. So I can go to the next row and I'm going to have another variable here. And for this one, um, I'm gonna put grade. And for this one, I'm going to go with string so I can show you how to do this. Um, and I am going to adjust my numbers because I'm pretty sure one of my words is bigger than eight characters. So string is what SPSS uses to say that it's non-numerical. Um, if we're being honest, I don't know. I've never had to use any of these other ones. Um, but if one of them applied to you, you could totally use it. Um, I've only ever had to use the numeric and string options. So numeric is for numbers. String is for words or letters. All right. Um, the width is the number of characters. So if you're gonna have larger words, um, then you may need to adjust the width. Obviously I won't have any decimals here. For my label here, I'm going to expand on my grade and say grade in school. And then for my level of measurement, grade in school is ordinal. And I'm gonna have one more categorical variable here. Um, and we'll call this color. I'm gonna leave it as numeric. I want no decimals. We'll call this favorite color. And I am gonna include values on this one. So I wanna show you how we can do that. Um, so when we come into this box, this little option opens that has the three dots. We click on that to be able to open this values window. So what this is asking for is what is the value and what does it stand for? So I might say one is red and then I click on add. Two can be orange. Three can be yellow. So you can see I'm just entering the number and that's the number that's going to appear in my data and then um, the value is what that number is going to stand for. All right, so I can have as many or as few options as I want here, but you can see where we've assigned a number to represent different categories. So that hints that this is going to be a categorical variable. So we can click OK to save those here. And we'll go over to our categories. Um, and like I said, it's categorical, so it has to be nominal or ordinal. Since they're colors, it's just going to be nominal. Before I move to the data, I want to just pause here. Do you guys have questions about just defining the variables? Feel free to uh, pop your questions about defining variables in the Q&A or the chat. <clears throat> There was one question while we're waiting to see if anyone has questions about that. There was one question in the Q&A and I thought it'd be a good time to address it. Um, do we have a statistician resource at NCU? So I'm going to say my little piece and then I, I know Rachel will probably add to it, but I did pop in the chat the ASC's um, statistics resources that are available. And then when they mention um, statistician resource at NCU, is there anything else that you would uh, drive students to? Um, the CTL actually has a bunch of resources related to statistics as well. Um, so without knowing exactly what you mean by like a statistician resource, um, we have statistics coaches. So we have a bunch of resources on our website. Um, and I definitely encourage you to start there to see if we have like a, a web page that might address the question that you have. If we don't, or if you still have questions or something like that, we do have coaches. So I am one of our statistics coaches and I am primarily in ASC chat, which is our live chat that you can access from our website. We also have statistics coaches that do individual and group sessions. So on our website, you'll see a link for group sessions and you can review what statistics sessions we offer. We have a bunch of them. Most of them focus on SPSS, um, but you can look for one of those to see if 
one of those might address your question. Otherwise, we can get you set up with an individual session. Individual sessions do have to be scheduled by a coach, so I would encourage you to use ASC chat to um, get some help with scheduling an individual session. But basically, you just meet one on one with a coach and you will be able to get some direct live support with whatever your questions relate to. Yes, and, and she says, thank you so much for that. And then Great. back to your original question. Yes. I think there's a few that have come up here. Hold on one second, let me. Okay. Um, why is the color numeric as opposed to string? Because when I enter my data, I'm entering it as numbers, which is why I created these values here. So when we go over to data view, I'm not going to be entering the word red or the word orange. I'm going to enter the numbers one and two and three. So the, the values that I'm entering into my data are going to be numbers as opposed to words. Thank you, Rachel. And I think that addresses LaWanda's question too about explaining the value for color again. So I think that addresses that. And then one more question on this, and I know you have to move on, but is G power a part of SPSS? It's okay. not. It's a completely separate program. Okay, great. And I think that's okay for right now. Thank okay. you. All right, so once we've defined all of the variables, um, we can switch to data view. So again, that there's two tabs, they're in the bottom left corner. So I can click on data view to go back. And now you can see this looks a little different. So as I said before, we can see those variables at the top. So hopefully it's a little more clear that each variable has its own column. And then I can enter the data for my participants. So most of the time, in your courses and stuff. And even when you're collecting your data for your dissertation, you're not gonna be filling this in manually. Um, if I wanted to, I could fill this in and say, okay, participant one, if I was you know, holding their survey, okay, how old were they? Well, they were 27. And what grade are they in? Well, this is gonna make sense. So let's, let's make this 16, because I wanna use freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, because it's easier. So they're, they're a 16 year old, um, so they're, maybe a sophomore. So I can enter sophomore. See how I typed the word sophomore? That's why that variable is string because I used the words. Um, and then for color, their color was five, whatever that choice was. I think that's green. Um, so I can enter my data like that. I can say, okay, here's participant one and then move across the rows and fill in all of their responses to each question. Or, which is, probably gonna be more like what you see on your assignments and stuff. You're just gonna be given all of this data. So I can just go down this row here and just enter in the information that I have. Um, I'll do a couple more here. Okay, um, so I can just enter all of that data into that column at once. And like I said, this is more like what you're going to see. Um, so let's see, 15, you're probably a freshman. And I'm just gonna copy some of these so that I don't have to enter this. Junior, senior. So you can see that this works, like I said, very similar to Excel. I'm just typing the information into each cell and you can just, press enter to return to the cell below it if you want to. Um, so all of that works very similarly. And I'm gonna, I think I had six in here. Okay. So I picked their favorite colors. All right, so questions about how I entered this information into SPSS. or questions about the data view versus variable view? Because I know that's probably like the biggest difference from what you're used to. So I'm going to wait to see if anyone has questions about the data view to the ver this specific example. But mm -hmm. while we wait, because I'm sure someone will ask you a question about it. <laughs> while we wait, 
Um, this did come up in the chat. What do we do when using an existing file that has the wrong measurements? That is a really great question. I would ask your instructor. Um, they have access to the code book. Um, and I, I have seen it before where there are some inconsistencies. So your instructor is gonna be the best informed to be able to tell you part of your assignment could be that you're supposed to evaluate and correct those errors, or part of it could be as maybe they were intentionally coded incorrectly or differently than what you think because you're supposed to treat them a specific way for the assignment. So if something looks wrong, ask your instructor and get some clarification from them first. Okay, thank you so much, Rachel. I think I have questions that are related to what you're trying to explain. So forgive me if something isn't. <laughs> does does align really matter? I've seen that a couple of times. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about like the alignment in the columns. That's mostly like for your aesthetic purposes. So like if I wanted to center all of these. Um, Yes, that's what the question is in relation yeah. to. Yeah. So if I wanted to center them, so now you can see when I go into this view, it looks a little um, easier to read. So my ages aren't right up against those grades anymore because they're not right aligned. So you can do that for aesthetic purposes. So if it helps you visually to be able to read and see the data, you're absolutely welcome to change it. It's not gonna affect your analyses, your charts and graphs. It's not gonna affect anything. It's just visually how you see that information in this data view. Thank you, Rachel. And then uh, one of the questions I think pertains to what you were showing just recently is, so are you always supposed to update the variable view first? That's a good question. And I think it's a matter of preference. Okay. Personally, I do like updating variable view first. Um, because one, it's going to create these columns so that when I go to enter my data, I already know which column is which. If I, here I can show you here, if I put in some information, it's going to create a variable for me, but then I get this funky variable name, um, it gives me the decimals, things like that. So I can enter data starting in data view. It absolutely works. Um, but I find personally, I prefer to go and define the variable first and then enter my data. But either method works just fine. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do one more because I know you'll want to move on to your next piece. There are definitely a lot of questions. So if we don't get through everything today, remember, please contact um, a coach in the Academic Success Center. I'll pop some other resources on the chat for you as well too. Couple of questions about importing the data. Um, if we are given the data, do we just import it? And that's one question. And then the second one is about, can we copy, copy paste from Excel into? Yes, yes. Um, so <laughs> if the file is an SPSS file, you won't have to import it. Just like if you wanna, um, if you're working on a paper and you've saved it to your computer and you go to open it later, when you go to locate it in your computer and you double click to open it or something like that, um, if you have that file downloaded to your computer, you can just use that to launch the program and it'll automatically have that data set open. Um, and then if it's in Excel, um, you can import. So you can go to file, import data, and then you can say it's an Excel file. And then this is gonna allow you to search your computer for the Excel file that you wanna open. And then you can open it and it's gonna have you verify that it's reading the Excel file correctly in order to open it. Um, you could also, as somebody else was asking about copying and pasting, yes, you can copy and paste from Excel. Like I said, the spreadsheet part where these cells are, are the same. The only difference, if you know in Excel, if you want these variable names in Excel, you're going to have those entered at the top. Um, oh, that's exactly right. one of the questions. How do you assign the variable? Yes. If you so like if I had, if I had um, color, I would be entering these variable things at the top in Excel, right? So if I go to copy, I do not want to copy the name. 
I just want to copy whatever data I have below it. And I can copy that and then paste it into the data view here in SPSS. And then I would go to variable view to enter the name. So let's so just like if you one. had to adjust the name, you would go into variable view after you copy paste your data. Right. So like if this name. if this is what my data looks like in Excel, right? If animal was the name of the variable, I'm just going to copy the data that's below it. Um, so I just did control C, but you could also right click and copy your whatever method you like for copying. Um, and then I can go in here and I can paste it. And again, I just did control V, but you could um, right click and paste if you wanted to, or use the edit and paste again, whatever method you prefer for copying and pasting. But you can see for my variable name, I don't want my variable name to end up for like participant one, right? Um, so I just want to copy the data here and then I can go to variable view and then I can change that name here. Nice, thank you so much. And you'll want to check because SPSS is going to automatically make some choices for you. So you can see that because my data in Excel was words, it automatically set this to string because it was already in words. If it was numbers, it would have set this to numeric. Um, it also chose a level of measurement. You'll want to make sure and check that these settings that it did are correct. Otherwise, you can change those settings. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. All right. So let's go in and um, let's do descriptive statistics first. So once we have our data, descriptive statistics are things that are describing your data set. So we're not like drawing any conclusions or anything from these. We're just describing maybe things like, um, like how many people are in your data set, but also what percentage of people liked cats? What percentage of people like dogs, right? We're just describing what we see in our data. That's descriptive statistics. So to run any sort of tests or things like that, we always go into analyze. The good thing about descriptive statistics it has its own category and it says descriptive statistics. Um, and then there's a number of options here. Um, I encourage you to kind of get familiar, especially with the top three frequencies, descriptives and explore. Each one of them gives you very similar information. Um, some work better for certain types of descriptives. So depending on what you're wanting to create. Um, so I always just encourage to just kind of click through and explore the different options that are available. So we'll start with the frequencies. Um, so here pops up this little box and I cannot make this box any bigger. Um, it won't change the font or anything like that. So um, yeah. Um, so here we can see our list of variables on this left-hand side. The right-hand box is where we're gonna move the variables that we want to get descriptive statistics for. Um, so let's just go with, um, we'll just stick with age. And then we can use these options on the right to pick and choose exactly what's gonna be included in the output. So if I go to statistics, I can choose from some different options here. Um, so I might choose an appropriate level of central tendency um, same thing for dispersion. I have options for things like the quartiles, the distribution. This is all going to depend. You don't have to select all of these. You don't have to select any of them if you don't want to. Um, just whatever your assignment is asking for or whatever you feel like is meaningful to share in relation to your variable. Then we click continue. We can also choose some graphs that we want to create here. Since my variable is continuous, I can go ahead and select a histogram. And I can also select the option to show the normal curve on that. Again, if you have questions about the different types of graphs and things like that, check out the charts and variables group session. Um, usually format and style, I don't do anything with any of these whenever I do anything, I've never done bootstrapping. Um, if you're working on more complex stuff, you might need a bootstrap, but I've never done it. So um, for the most part, I stick with the simplistic stuff. The good thing about SPSS is you can't really break it. 
Um, so feel free to click through some of those, just like I did to just open it and see, well, what is this? And if you're looking at it, you're like, um, I don't know what to do here. You probably don't have to do anything with it. So um, feel free to just close out of anything like that. It's not going to affect anything if you've opened it. If you've made changes to it and you don't know how to undo it, just close out of SPSS without saving your changes and you're good to go. Um, so feel free to click around and just kind of get familiar with everything that's in SPSS. Um, so here we can see this option that I can display frequency tables. And that's because I'm in frequencies. Um, I'm going to turn this off since I have a continuous variable here. And usually for frequencies, it works better for categorical variables. But when it was on, we also have this create APA style tables box. That's because I'm using version 27. If you're using version 26, this option doesn't exist there. Um, and it's totally up to you if you want to select that box to create those tables or not. Um, personally, I don't really feel like they're needed because when you are trying to create an APA table, SPSS gives you a lot more information than you really need to include in your papers, not your assignments, always do what your assignment says, um, but like when you're working on your dissertation, for example, you don't need to have all of the different pieces that come in the SPSS output in your paper. You only need to highlight the key pieces that the reader would need to know about your analysis and stuff like that. So totally up to you if you want to use this option or not. Personally, I think it's better to just make your own tables. Either way. All right, so you're gonna select the appropriate options and then click okay. Now you can see this came up in a different window. This is another piece of SPSS that it's very different from Excel. You have two windows, the data window, which is what we've been working in, and then this output window. And I will make this bigger so you guys can see this as well. Um, so the output window is going to be where everything that I create in SPSS is going to show up. So we can see this table of statistics. So I told it that I wanted the mean, the median, and standard deviation. So we can see those values here. I also told it that I wanted a histogram and we can see the histogram that it created here. Um, this file saves separately. So if you want to save your work, you would want to save this page separately. So I can go and save as, and you can see this is saving as an output. I can change this name to something meaningful um, so that I can find it later whether it's the course ID or something like that. Um, and then you can choose where you wanna save it. So you could save it to your specific files, your documents. Um, if you have a specific folder that you put stuff like this in, um, whatever that looks like. So you can choose where you want to save it. And that's saving just the output window, not your data or anything like that. Before I move on, questions related to um, doing the descriptive statistics that I've showed you or the whole output window stuff. So feel free to pop in anything about descriptive statistics yep. or the output window, but I, I have to get this question in because it was in there in the very beginning. Um, yep. How do you import data from a Word file to SPSS? Are you able to um, like there are tables with data. How do you bring those into SPSS? Is that something you're gonna cover by chance? So I don't think that you can import from a Word document. Um, Cause if I go to import, yeah, see it doesn't have Word as an option here. And it's because it's not um, like a spreadsheet or a, like a data file. Um, more than likely, it's gonna be something that you're gonna enter manually, manually. like I did here. Okay. And they should be small tables. So you shouldn't have, you know, dozens of values that you're going to be entering or anything like that. It should be something fairly small and manageable. Okay. Um, attendees, if there's anything in terms of output or the window that she just shared, please feel free to pop that in the chat or the Q and A and, um, SPSS is Mac compatible, correct? Yes, there is a version for Mac. So when you go into the store, 
to like choose it, just make sure that you're choosing the Mac option. Yes. Okay. I don't see anything right now about output right now from what you just shared. Okay. While I'm thinking about Mac, um, if you're a Mac user, you might already know this, uh, but I do want to point it out. Um, there is a big difference in the Mac view. So you can see here in my output window and even in my SPSS data set window that I have like those menu options right here in that window. So if I have like this window and it's minimized, right? I can see like those, those like analyzed graphs. I can see those menu options here on this window. Again, if you're familiar with a Mac, you know those don't exist there. <laughs> So you'll have that this output window, but you won't see these options up here at the top. Um, that's because they are at the top of your, your screen. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you click on the window just to make sure that's your active window. But then at the very, very top of your screen, you should see file, edit, view, data, things like that. So if you're watching tutorials and stuff and you're like, but I don't have an analyze button, you do. Just make sure that you've activated that window as your active window and then go to the very top of your screen and you'll see analyze. I'm glad that somebody mentioned it because that is something that we see a lot with people that are using Macs. They're like, okay, but mine doesn't look like that. It doesn't. Why they had to do it so crazy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You didn't build but it, an it SPSS. Is the same. I know yes. like Word and Excel, all of them work the same way. So if you're familiar with your Mac, you should be familiar with that menu movement option, but I did want to point it out just in case. Thank you, Rachel. There is a question about the, um, how do you open output to see your data? I'm not sure that I follow that question. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly either. Yeah, not, no, you're okay. <laughs> um, if you want to expand on it, please do. And yeah. then on the data view page, I am using states as the first variable and then numbers for the second three variables. So I only need to change the states column to string, correct? If you're entering the state using like Indiana, Alabama, or like their abbreviations, I, N, A, L, things like that. Yes, you would want that to be string so that you can enter those alphabetical characters. Okay, that's it for now, Rachel. Okay. All right. So that's how we can run descriptives. And like I said, there are different types. So you could go into descriptives and you can see this looks the same where I can move my variables over. Um, but when we go into options, we see some different choices here. This looks a little bit different as far as what we can choose. Um, we also have this option to save standardized values as variables. Um, you will be doing that on an assignment. It tells you to check the box. It's really simple here. Um, but you can go through and kind of play with each of those different descriptive statistics options. There's also a tutorial video in the Academic Success Center that walks through the three different options. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that I cover is graphs. I'm so, so sorry to interrupt you, Rachel. I just want to make sure we're able to talk about it because she expanded on her output. She mentioned okay. um, when I open output, all I see is how the output was gotten, no data. So your data isn't in the output. Um, so I, I mean, I guess it depends. Like you can see up here, it's got the, like the coding language or whatever. Um, and then it'll generate whatever I told it to generate below it. Um, but there's no like accessing the data from this output view, but it should show whatever you've told it to create. Now, unless you've told it to create something that it can't create. So maybe you asked for a specific test, but you didn't have the right data or the right variable selected in order for it to run the test, it might give you um, like an error or something like that saying that something's missing or that it couldn't run the test. But if you wanted to get back to your data, you can just minimize this output window. So clicking on that little line in the corner so you could minimize the output to go back to your data. Thank you so much, Rachel. I know you want to be able to cover graphs. So we've got about 10 yes. minutes. 
So right next to analyze, we have the graph option. Again, there's a bunch of different options here. Um, Legacy dialogues. I know a lot of the courses encourage you to use legacy dialogues to create your graphs. You absolutely can. I find for people that um, are less familiar with SPSS or less familiar with statistics, this option seems to be a little bit more confusing. Um, and I'll just kind of show you why. Um, so you can see there's a lot of different places to put things here. And if you're looking at this, you might be asking like, okay, well, do I have to put something in all of these places? Um, which options am I supposed to be selecting? What variable goes where? And so there's just a lot that you have a lot of questions on that's not necessarily intuitive. Um, so I usually prefer using Chart Builder. I think this one's a lot more user-friendly for a lot of people. Um, so one, it's very visual. So if you're a good visual person, you will like this method. Um, so here at the bottom, we can choose the type of graph that we want to create. So if I wanted to create a bar graph, I could choose bar from this list. And you can see on the right here, there's a number of different options of what that bar graph could look like. In most cases, you'll probably use a simple bar graph or a clustered bar graph. You probably won't use any of the 3D graphs or anything like that. So I'm gonna just show a simple bar graph. So you're going to choose the little icon that represents the graphs that you want, and you're going to drag it up here to this bigger gallery box, and then you just let go to drop it in place. This is kind of a example of what your graph will look like. It's not showing you what your graph actually looks like, but you can see it's visual. So here, if I'm thinking, okay, well, x-axis, what goes on the x-axis? Well, I can see in this picture that on the x-axis, that's where the bars come from. So the x-axis is, what do I want the bars to be? This is a really good place to put categorical variables. So maybe grade, I could use grade here. So I select the variable that I want. And again, I can just drag it to that axis and drop it in the box. And you can see that it's kind of adapted my graph. Now it defaulted the y-axis to count. That means that if I created this graph right now, it's going to show me the number of people in each of these categories. So I could, if that's what I wanna create, I can go ahead and say, okay. The good thing with bar graphs, I can change that. So maybe I wanna show, um, like the average age for each grade. So I could take my age variable and I can drag it into this y-axis box. And now it says mean age. So it's going to show the average age for each category. And I can change that using this element properties on the right. So if I wanted the median instead of the mean, or the mode instead of the mean or something like that, I could change those options over here on the right. When I've done, when I'm done creating my settings for this, I can click on okay. And you can see this is automatically going to bring back up my output window because that's where everything that I create goes. Again, we see that coding language, but if I scroll down, I can see that graph. And we see on the axis again, grade in school. So it doesn't say grade, the name of the variable, it shows that label that I put in there. So it says grade in school. And then we can see where I entered the, the name. So freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, we can see those labels down here. And if I had done, so let me do a graph and I'll show you this as well while I'm doing this. So um, from my output, I can also create things. So I don't have to go back to my data set every single time I want to create a new test or a new graph or something like that. My output window also has these options. So I can go to graph, um, go back into chart builder, and then I can drag things back out if I want to, a quick way to just kind of start over. There's a reset button at the bottom. And if I click on reset, it's gonna give me a clean slate here. Um, so if I wanted to do, I'll choose, let's do a pie chart this time. So I clicked on pie, there's only one option. So I'm gonna drag it up here. Slice by, so what are my categories? What do I want each slice on the pie to be? 
I'm going to go with the favorite color on this one. And then I'm going to leave this as showing the count. I can change count to like the percentage or the sum or something like that. So if I wanted to show the number of people that chose each color, this is what my pie chart is going to show right now. So I can click on OK. And this is my pie chart. And if we look at this legend over here, if you remember in my data, and let me just move this down here. In my data for color, I entered numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. But in my legend, it shows the words. And this is where that values comes into play. So even though my data is numbers, because I went into variable view and I assigned those values, when I generate graphs like this, it's not gonna give the numbers. So instead of saying one, two, three, four, five, six over here, it actually says those colors, those categories that I set. So it makes this graph more meaningful than just seeing those numbers. And hopefully again, that kind of helps show what I was doing when I was defining those variables as well. Questions about creating these graphs using SPSS. Um, if you have any questions about the graphs, um, I just want to check in with you, Rachel. Was there yeah. one other section that you wanted to go over? This? Graphs was the last part. Okay, great. Um, why, why the, why are, oh, excuse me, hold on. Is there a way to change the colors? Um, so if you double click on the graph, it opens this chart editor. Um, you might be able to change those. Yeah. So. Let's see if I can move this little box. Here we go. Um, so it has this properties box. So you could go in here and you could choose different colors here. So you can see the, oh, that didn't change what I wanted it to. A uh, little bit of playing around there. Yeah. Um, someone also mentions why the color and the name is different. I'm not quite sure what that's in reference to. Oh, because I think that what they're asking is why is the red space blue? Oh, is that what yes. you're asking? Yes, uh, that seems right. <laughs> the key, yes. <laughs> so that's because SPSS just assigns those colors. I was thinking that I could change them here. Maybe I need to go into these properties. I've honestly never tried to change, change the colors. them. Okay. That's the border. That's okay. That can be for a yeah, different I, That's day. a really great question. Um, and now, now I want to know. So, okay, so now I'm going to find out if I can change these colors and I will let you know. Uh, awesome. But yes, so SPSS chose the colors of the slices. It doesn't know that my variables had colors. So um, that's why it would totally be awesome if the colors of the slices were in fact the colors of the words. Um, right. so, okay, you that probably won't often use that variable, um, but True. yeah, so that's why there's a disconnect there because mm -hmm. SPSS just assigns the colors based on how many variables you have and stuff like that. Okay, thank you so much, Rachel. A couple of questions. I feel like we have a couple more minutes, so I'm just gonna um, okay. ask these really quickly. Um, it was suggested that I use propensity match scoring. Is that advanced statistics that can be found in SPSS? I have no idea what that is. So I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean by propensity match. Now, if I had a better understanding, uh, maybe okay. I could connect it a little bit. Um, definitely reach out to us in the Academic Success Center. Um, and I would be happy to see how we can help with that. Um, maybe just scheduling an individual session or something to go over those concepts. Thank you so much, Rachel. And then this was a question I thought would be, um, I don't know if this is something you're able to answer, maybe more potentially IT, but do you know, um, someone mentioned they have like multiple screens. Um, do you have any idea if you can lay the software over multiple screens? Um, I'm not sure that I'm clear on what you mean by lay the software over multiple screens. So you um, have I do multiple, have, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, I have a monitor that I can hook up to my computer and I can just like with Word and things like that, like I can drag things to like the extended desktop or whatever they call that. Okay. Um, so 
you could have SPSS open on one computer. And as long as you can move windows and stuff to those other ones, you could absolutely say like, have your output open on one monitor and then the data set open on another. So rather than flipping back and forth between the two, you can see both at the same time. And that's totally possible. I think so I'm that not sure was... if that's what you're asking, but yes, yes, you should be able to, yeah. If you, it, as long as it's connected to your like extended desktop where you can just drag it and move it to whatever monitor you need it to be on. Yes, SPSS does that too. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. And I think that's really what it's about. It's not having like go in between the windows, being able to look at both. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Um, okay. Um, we are at time at this point, yep. but I just want to give a couple of a couple of just reminders here at the very end. We do have those weekly statistics um, study sessions on Fridays. Of course, don't forget, as Rachel mentions, please check out um, the Academic Success Center if you'd like to take a look at some statistic resources or maybe coaching um, as well. And, uh, and as Esther has just popped in the chat, one more final reminder, this is recorded and we are gonna post it in the CTL LibGuides webinar page. We also have a public YouTube channel. So if you wanna go there and check us out in the CTL, and Rachel, thank you so much for spending the time going over these basics here. We really appreciate you and your expertise and all the support that you provide for our students. So thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem. Happy to help however I can. I know <laughs> SPSS can be a beast sometimes. So anything to make it less intimidating. Absolutely. And on that note, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Take care. <laughs>